Uh, commercial vehicle sales are, of course, another good indicator of how the economy is performing. And while truck and bus sales have seen some uptick in the recent past, uh, the growth has not been steady. Now checking in on that industry and the company uh, with Chief Financial Officer of Ashok Leyland to talk about how the rest of the year will pan out. Joining us from Chennai, Gopal Mahadevan. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mahadevan. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you've had good volume growth this quarter, if I understand your numbers correctly. Margins were lower. And what was the sort of sustaining impact of GST? Can you walk us through that? Sure. I think uh, let me just step back a little bit and give uh, the overall perspective just on the industry as well as on the company's performance on the top line and volumes. Uh, you know, as we had anticipated in Q1, where the uh, you know the total industry volume had come down by nearly 31 percent, uh, we have seen a reasonably smart recovery in Q2, where the industry actually grew by 22 percent. And YTD, if you were to look at it, the total industry volume is just about 7 percent lower than the same period last year. And you must remember that uh, this was an industry that has actually gone through quite a bit of challenge. You know, in December 2016, we have had the uh, demonetization impact, which actually saw the uh, general climate, you know, general industrial climate coming down. This uh, in March we had something very specific to the industry, which was the BS3 to BS4 convert conversion. I mean, the, the transition which happened overnight. So, given that background, I think the uh, the industry has kind of uh, uh, you know kind of recovered quite well in uh, Q2, and Ashok Leyland has also grown, uh, you know, slightly higher than the pace of the industry. If you were to look at the CM volume numbers, and on a YTD basis, our market share still continues to be higher. But having said that, I think one thing that is very concerning is the way the industry is, uh, is uh, you know, looking at pricing. The, the level of discount uh, discounting has become unprecedented. And frankly, we don't participate in businesses which don't make financial sense to us. Uh, we believe that uh, we should acquire customers, but uh, they have to be done reasonably profitably. And, uh, you know, so you have seen one, one of the main reasons also for... Uh, uh, the pressure on the margins was on pricing, but there were four other reasons as well. One was, uh, you know, in Q2 of last year, we have had an exceptional uh, export to Senegal, which is, which actually added about 200 basis points to the margins of uh, Q2 last year. The second one was we had a one-off uh, nearly 50 crore uh, price adjustment that happened for our defense supplies uh, because it was, uh, you know, it, it was indexed. And that came in straight to the bottom line. The third reason, of course, has also been the steep increases in raw material prices, which is, of course, was felt across the industry. And, uh, you know, steel prices have been going up. But given the fact that the discounting has been pretty high in the current quarter, uh, we have not been able to raise prices. You know, we are the only player in the industry who continues to have double-digit EBITDA margin. And if you were to look at it out of uh, the last 11 quarters, 11 sequential quarters, 10 out of them, we have had double-digit EBITDA margin. So very clearly, the strategy of the company is to pursue growth, but at the same time ensure that it is done profitably. Uh, Mr. Mahadevan, just a couple of follow-up questions on that margin front. On a lighter-like basis, if you were to remove the exceptional items that you spoke about in the second quarter of last year, uh, what would your margin have been? And therefore, have you been able to improve on it as you spoke about, or have you con the, there can persist to be pressure because of the pricing or the discounts that you spoke of? And then I have one more follow-up question on that. I mean, if I were to look at it between, uh, say, Q2 of last year and Q2 of current year, I think our margins would have been almost on the same levels if I were to remove the exceptionals. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's it's uh, what we have to factor in is how are we going to move forward. So the effort has always been to uh, keep our uh, middle, line, uh, middle line efficient, uh, get down our material cost as much as possible, uh, and... Uh, ensure that uh, you know uh, uh, we uh, you know we are able to be competitive in the market having said that our uh, investments in acquiring customers continue uh, we would pursue that uh, uh, you know uh, incessantly uh, our network expansion continues our quality initiative uh, i will try and get some more details on that from you sir but i just one more question on margin before i hand it over to ira and that is that are you facing margin pressure because your second largest competitor is currently fighting uh, to regain market share so is it coming from tata motors mostly or are you facing market uh, you know margin pressure because uh, the improvement in truck sales is marginal and therefore uh, people are undercutting to be able to show more volume growth can you characterize exactly what kind of pressure this and whether it will sustain over the next few quarters? Well, I will not be able to comment on the specific pricing strategies of any player in the market. All I can tell you is that the industry seems to believe 
uh, and uh, that does not include a show clearance. Is that the best way to acquire customers to give discounts? If you ask me, that's the bottom bottom yeah, end of the pie. Where is the margin pressure right? coming from? Is it coming from very poor uh, increase in in sales growth, as you pointed out, or is it coming simply because one player in the market is trying to uh, reacquire market share? Well, let me uh, put it this way: uh, for a show clearance, I've explained the reasons to you. These reasons were not. Purely on account of pricing, which is one of the reasons. Okay. We have had other reasons as well, which are uh, you know very clear, uh, which was the uh, one-off export or the uh, you know the defense uh, uh, pricing adjustment that happened. Uh, as far as competition is concerned, only they will be able to explain as to why they believe that the pricing strategy adopted is the best for their companies. For us, very obviously, anything that is uh, sold at a discount or which doesn't make uh, uh, you know. Uh, Rational business sense uh, uh, really the fact that uh, the level of discounting has gone to unprecedented levels, and uh, you know you can't stay out of it. You can't say no. I'm not going to be part of it. But at the same time, what we have decided to do, which you have seen over the last two two months, is we have decided not to participate or pursue businesses where the level of discounting is so high that uh, you know we are going to not only give us uh, give a customer a vehicle, but also leave some money on the table. That doesn't make sense at all. Uh, Mr. Mahadevan, uh, uh, good morning. This is Ira joining in. I just have uh, one odd uh, macro question actually on the volume growth front, sir. Uh, can you give us a sense of you know what's driving volume growth? I know that there was that one-off factor of uh, clampdown on overloading, etc., which it seemed to driv uh, have driven some segments. Has that played out, and are we now sort of back to organic volume growth, if I can call it that? See, I would say it's a mixture of uh, two, three things. One is we have seen a lot of uncertainty in the industry, and I'm not going to repeat it in the interest of time. So. Uh, Q2 kind of was, you know, things are stabilizing a bit, so the uncertainty on GST is also moving away, so you could see, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a revival of the volume, that's one. The second one is, yes, uh, I think the rated load uh, legislation that is actually getting rolled out across the country will help in drive uh, driving volume growth as well, because very clearly it's a big positive for fleet operators. The vehicles are more efficient, the turnaround times are more efficient, and, uh, you know, the end customers who are the customers of the fleet operators are also happy about this. And of course, it also improves overall safety on the road. So it's a win-win for all of us. And we are very happy about uh, the, the, the country moving towards rated load. The third thing I would say is that uh, we are seeing that the certain amount of efficiency that is getting built in because of GST and the whole uh, scheme of uh, transportation is moving towards uh, hub and spoke. And that is why you are actually seeing that, uh, you know, the, the tractor trailer volumes uh, and MDV volumes are going up in uh, you know, at, at the, uh, while haulage volumes have come off because people are moving towards larger trucks, you know, they want to transport more bulkier loads, which makes it also good for the industry because uh, the larger the vehicle that you tell us to sell, the better is the profitability. Uh, if this continues and the government pursues its investment-led growth strategy and there is a recovery of the economy in the second half of the year, well, it would augur pretty well for uh, the commercial vehicle industry. You won't be able to give us a sense of the range within which volume growth should settle and how it would compare, so, uh, say, to last year, sir. Uh, maybe for the full year, if not for quarters of quarter. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me, and the level of uncertainties that we have witnessed over the last six months has been pretty high. But I will still wager that. I'm going to say, I repeat, I still wager that. Uh, I mean, or I'll take a guess. Let me put it that way: that uh, if if there are no further uncertainties in the economy and we do see a revival of uh, you know the investments as well as uh, the investment led initiatives of the government uh, yeah um, q4 you must remember had had seen q4 of last year had seen quite a bit of uh, pre buy on bs3 bs4 but uh, uh, we'll have to wait and watch how q4 pans out this year so I'm sorry, we lost the connection exactly at that point where you were giving us some sort of a number. So if you did give us a number, can you briefly repeat it, sir? We'd hate to miss it. Even Providence doesn't want me to give a forward-looking <laughs> statement. But, <laughs> but anyway, let me try again. See, all I'm saying is it's quite difficult. I'll repeat myself. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. But if I were to take a guess, not a wager, I'll correct myself. But if I were to take a guess... What I would say is that uh, if the investment-led growth strategy of the government were to be rolled out quickly, if the, the if we see a revival of the GDP and the growth in the Indian economy, I still feel that it is quite possible that uh, second half could see quite a bit of recovery on an overall year basis. It is possible that uh, the uh, total industry volume could grow by about five to ten percent. What we must remember is the size of the vehicles have uh, grown. You know, if you look at the tonnage or the number of axles, 
if you were to see the industry, actually it has grown. Because, you know, the industry has very clearly moved from, you know, the 20 tonner to the 28 tonner to the 38 now, 38 and 49 tonner. You know, 37 and 49 tonner. So, the shift has been to the 37 and 49 tonner and that's actually increasing the uh, overall uh, quantum of goods that is getting transported. Uh, Mr. Mahadevan, quickly in 30 seconds, if I can put in a quick question on, have you managed to maintain market share this quarter? Well, yes, I mean, uh, pretty much we have been able to maintain market share. Pretty much? Yeah. Okay. I see if you look at the CM data, I would say that uh, we have marginally gained. Marginally gained. Okay. All right. Great. So despite not agreeing to discount, you've managed to maintain market share. I hope that bodes well for the quarters to come. Thank you very much for joining us this morning.